The key is the most unusual of our weapon designs. We have three-sided blades, two-sided bars, but this is our only single-tooth weapon. We've gotten a lot of questions about this blade. What kind of match was it designed for? Why is it shaped like this? Why didn't we use it in 2019? I'm Nick, weapon designer for Team Bloodsport, and oh boy was this one interesting to design. This is part three of our blade design series, the key. When we designed the first version of Bloodsport, we wanted to have two weapons, one for dishing out damage to heavily armored opponents, and another for going weapon to weapon with other spinners. So while the long bar was optimized for reach and cutting geometry, the key was designed around durability as well as a number of other factors at play in the dynamics of a spinner to spinner exchange. At the time, we were drawing mainly on our experience fighting with bots in the smaller weight classes. My 3 pound beetle weight, Phantom 2, had taught me two key things about going weapon to weapon with drums and vertical spinners. The first thing was that a horizontal spinner benefits from greater engagement depth, that being the distance that the bots move toward each other in the time that it takes for the weapon tooth to come around again. The further in we can engage, the more likely we are to catch the side of the opponent's weapon or even the weapon supports before they smack the end of the bar upward. The second thing was that a rectangular bar shape is a liability in the low depth hits, where the opponent has an advantage. Opponents were often catching the end of my blade on the trailing side, and I realized that this material didn't necessarily need to be there. Tapering off the trailing edge of the bar makes it a smaller target and reduces the chance of these kind of hits happening. So that partially explains the shape of the key. One tooth means we have twice as much time before the next tooth pass, and the end tapers off to make it a smaller target. The key has a few other features to help it hold up. It's one inch thick solid S7 tool steel. The tooth is rounded and shaped less aggressively, and it's short. The spin circle is only 40 inches in diameter, making any bending loads smaller. In fact, the key is almost as strong as the thick bar we made for 2020. The last big secret to unlock is stability. We hadn't dived into the physics of this yet, but we had seen that narrow bars tended to tumble after a hit, while wider shapes like discs or rotors tended to stay level. So we made the counterweight as wide as possible to get as much weight away from the bar's axis as we could, giving it that key shape and hopefully making it more stable. Finally, the spikes on the side balance out the weight that we took away from that side at the end, as well as completing the key aesthetic. So, after going to all of that trouble, why didn't the key turn up in any of our fights last year? Well, we had a few problems. The first was weight. The key weighs 56 pounds, which is lighter than our newer weapons but four pounds heavier than our long bar in its original setup. The idea was that the lighter bar would leave room for extra top armor or to run our three pound mini bot thumb warm. Unfortunately, the bot came in a bit heavy though, and we would have needed to cut weight somewhere to run the key. That might have been doable if not for the other problem. We underestimated the reach of our opponents and the bite that our bot could get. There's a risk that big diameter verts could hit the short end of the bar, which isn't as strong as the tooth end. This is why the thick bar for 2020 is longer at 42 inches and symmetrical. And it worked! We still had enough bite to hit the back of Endgame's weapon. As for the key in the future, it's the lightest option among our current array of weapons, giving it the best spin-up. And it's still quite strong vertically. We think the best use case for this weapon would be against aggressive, low-reach drum spinners like Minotaur or Yeti, or in fights where we absolutely need to stay spinning as a defense, like if we were to fight Quantum or Kraken. Its lightweight also gives us flexibility if we ever need to come up with a new armor setup on the fly. Who do you think we should use the key against? Which blade should we review next? Let us know in the comments! And make sure to subscribe here and watch BattleBots on Discovery to see our bot in action. Thanks for watching! Thank you.